Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the standard 1.3 in 6th grade and also topics under the study island lesson algebraic expressions. So today's lesson is mainly going to be about substitution which means that you're going to be told to replace a certain variable which is a letter in math with a certain number and then work that problem out. So as we're going through those notes and questions, make sure that you are taking notes so that you have that to study from when you are trying these problems on your own. And then you can even pause the video if I go too fast so you can stay caught up on your notes. And you can even pause at the beginning of a question, work that question out for yourself, and then watch the video to see if you get the same problems and answers that I do. I'm so glad that you are joining us today and let's go ahead and watch, take some notes. The first thing we want to make sure we understand is the definitions of expression and evaluate. So when you are in evaluating an algebraic expression for a certain value of a variable, you substitute or replace that value in the expression and then simplify using the correct order of operations. So what that means is an expression is anything that has a number, a variable, and then an operation, so it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. It does not have an equal sign. So here are two examples of expressions. We have a number, we have a variable, and we have a operation. Here it's division, here it's subtraction. And here it's asking you to evaluate that expression when n is 8. So that just means that anywhere you see an n, you're going to replace that with an 8. And then you just use order of operations, which we will go over, to simplify that until you get a single number as your final answer. So just as a refresher, order of operations, sometimes we use the phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to remember this acronym, or some people just remember PEMDAS. Either way works. The one thing you need to remember, though, is this third and fourth step. So P is for parentheses. You do anything inside parentheses first. E is for exponent, so you do any exponents next. But when you get down to multiply and divide, it is not multiplication and then division. It is you do multiplication and division together left to right, like you read. So if there's division before multiplication, do the division first. If multiplication is first, do multiplication first. And the same with addition and subtraction, it's done left to right. So if the subtraction comes first, do subtraction. If the addition comes first, do addition first. Those are the two most common mistakes is people think, oh, okay, M comes before D, so I do all multiplication first. A comes before S, I do all addition first. That's not the case. You do multiplication, division left to right, addition and subtraction left to right. So please don't forget that. So here they're telling us that N is 240.61. And they want to know what is the value of 6.96 plus N if you replace that N with the 240 and 61 hundredths. So if I do that, I'm going to have 6.96 plus, but this time I'm not writing N, I'm writing the 240.61. So you're probably going to have to go off to the side and write that vertically so you can add, and add these two numbers without a mistake. So remember when you're adding decimals you have to line up the decimals and then 1 plus 6 is 7, 6 plus 9 is 15, carry the 1, 1 plus 0 is 1 plus 6 is 7 and then the 4 and the 2 come down. The same with the decimal just lines up in the answer. So it's going to make my final answer C 247 and 57 hundredths. Okay, this next problem tells us that C is going to be 12 and wants us to find the value of this expression. So that means I'm going to substitute 12 in for C and rewrite the entire problem. So now I'm looking at it, I have multiplication and subtraction. 
Multiplication is what I need to do first, according to order of operation. So I have 12 times 6. And if you don't have that one memorized, you can go off to the side and work it out. But it's going to be 72 minus 4. Now take note how I just rewrote that down below and then wrote the minus 4 again. Make sure you take the time to keep everything neat and orderly when you have more than one operation so that you don't make careless mistakes because you can't keep track of your work. And then 72 minus 4 is going to be 68. And once again, if you needed to work that out vertically, you could do that. And that's going to make my final answer A. In this problem, they tell us that D is going to be 3. So that means I'm going to rewrite this, but instead of copying the D, I'm going to replace that with a 3. So I'm going to have 23 minus 21 divided by 3. 21, I have subtraction and I have division. So I always do division before subtraction. So I'm going to have 21 divided by 3 is 7. And then I'm still going to have the 23 minus in front. And then I just do the 23 minus 7. So if you need to go off to the side and work that out, you can. That's going to be 16, which is my final answer, C. Okay, my next problem is I have a 60 and 3 tenths to replace N with in this problem. So I'm going to have, I'm going to write down the parentheses, 753 56 and 3 tenths minus this what n is representing 60 and 3 tenths in parenthesis divided by 24. So order of operations parentheses is always first. So I'm going to do what's inside of the parentheses first, which is this subtraction. So you might have to go off to the side and rewrite that vertically so that you can do that subtraction without making any mistakes. Remember when you're subtracting decimals, the decimals line up. So 3 minus 3 is 0. 6 minus 0 is 6. And then I have to borrow here. 15 minus 6 is 9. And then 6 minus 0 is 6. And once again, the the decimal sign just moves down in addition and subtraction. And because there's a zero at the end, I can just drop that. And this subtraction ends up being 696 divided by 24. So now I just have that division left to do. So I'm going to have to go off to this side here and write this as long division so I can work it out. 24 goes into 69 two times, and then 2 times 24 is 48. And when I subtract that, I get 21, so I bring down the 6. And then 24 goes into 216 nine times. 24 times 9, which you might have to go off to the side and play guess and check on this one, but once you get 24 times 9, it's going to be 216, which when I subtract 216 minus 216, that leaves me with zero, no remainder. So that means that 29 choice B is going to be my final answer. This next question has fractions in it, but don't be afraid. You're going to have that N is, a, is equal to one third and wants to know what is this value of this expression then. So that means I'm going to replace this N with a one third. So I'm going to have one minus parenthesis one third plus one twelfth in parenthesis. So order of operations always says do what's in the parentheses first. So I'm going to be adding fractions. So that means I have to have a common denominator. My smallest common denominator of 3 and 12 is going to be 12. So to get the denominator to be 12, I have to multiply by 4. So I have to multiply the top by 4 also. So 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. And that's going to be plus 1 12 still. Notice that I'm recopying the entire problem over again so I don't lose track of anything. And then 4 twelfths plus 1 twelfth is 5 twelfths. 
And then I'm going to have 1 minus 5 twelfths. So that means I'm going to have to convert 1 into a fraction, which is going to be 12 out of 12 is the same as a whole, or 1 minus 5 twelfths. And then I just subtract the tops. 12 minus 5 is 7, and the denominator stays the same. So 7 twelfths choice A is going to be my final answer. This next question tells us that a equals 4 and then define the value of this expression. So I'm going to rewrite it, but instead of writing a, I'm going to write 4 in its place. So I'm going to have parenthesis 20 divided by 4 in parenthesis plus 10. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. I do that first because it's inside of the parentheses, and then I copy down the plus 10. And then 5 plus 10 is 15. So 15 choice D is going to be my final answer. This last question has the most numbers in a problem that you should see like this. So they tell us to, that N is 2 and a third, and what is the value of the expression below? So I'm going to rewrite this whole thing. I'm going to take the time to write, rewrite the whole thing, but instead of writing n, I'm going to write 2 and 1 third. And that's going to be added to 1 and 2 thirds, in parenthesis, times 153 divided by 17. So order of operations, I always do parentheses first. So in inside these parentheses, I have two mixed numbers that have a common denominator. So I'm going to add the whole part, the big part, 2 plus 1 is 3. And then I add the fraction part, 1 third plus 2 thirds is 3 thirds. 3 thirds is the same as 1. So this is actually 3 plus 1, which is 4. So now that I have the parenthesis part done, I'm going to go ahead and copy down that rest of this problem so I don't lose track of anything. And then I don't have any exponents, so then I go ahead and do multiplication and division left to right. So I have multiplication first, so I'm going to take 4 times 153, and you're going to have to go off to the side most likely and work that out unless you have that memorized for some reason, but four times three is 12, carry the one, five times four is 20, add the one is 21, carry the two, four times one is four, add the two is six. So this is, when you do that multiplication, that works out to 612, that's now divisible by 17. So once again, I'm gonna have to go off to this side and make this a long division problem so I can work it out. 17 divides into 61 three times. 3 times 17 is 51. And when I subtract 61 minus 51, I get 10. Carry down the 2. 17 divides into 102 six times. 6 times 17 is 102. And when I subtract that, I get 0, which means there's no remainder. So that means B, 36, is going to be my final answer. Okay, this next problem tells me that N is 27 and define the value of the expression. So that means that I'm going to rewrite this whole expression, but when I see that N, I'm going to replace it with 27. I'm going to have times 14 minus 48 and 5 tenths. And so order of operations is you do parentheses first. Well, there's no parentheses here, so I'm done with that one. There's no exponent, so I'm done with E. And then I do multiplication and division left to right. So I have this multiplication here, 27 times 14. And you'd have to go off to the side and work that out. And when you do that work that out, you should get 378. And then I still am going to copy down the 8 and 11 hundredths being added at the front and the 48 and 5 tenths being subtracted at the end. And 
And I don't have any multiplication or division left, so now I just do addition and subtraction left to right. So I'm going to have the 378 being added to 8 and 11 hundredths. So remember, once again, I line up the decimals. 1 plus 0 is 1. Bring down the decimal. 8 plus 8 is 16. Carry the 1. 7, 7 plus 1 is 8. And then the 3 just comes down. So when you add those together, you get 386 and 11 hundredths. And then you still have that minus 48 and 10, 5 tenths at the end. So then I'm just going to add the minus 48 and 5 tenths to this problem. Remembering to line up the decimal, so I'll add a 0, and then I'll just subtract. 1 minus 0 is 1. I am going to have to carry here, so I'm going to make this 11 and this a 5. 11 minus 5 is 6 going to have to carry again, make it 15 and 7. 15 minus 8 is 7. 7 minus 4 is 3. And then I have a 3 to bring down. So when I do that subtraction, my final answer is going to be 337 and 61 hundredths, which is, makes my final answer choice A. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.